Since the early 1990s, the process of deregulation and the introduction of competitive markets have reshaped the landscape of the traditionally monopolistic and government-controlled power sectors. In many countries worldwide, electricity is now traded under market rules using spot and derivative contracts. However, electricity is a very special commodity. It's economically unstorable, and power system stability requires a constant balance between production and consumption. At the same time, electricity demand depends on weather, temperature, wind, speed, precipitation, etc., and the intensity of business and everyday activities. On the one hand, these unique and specific characteristics lead to a price dynamics not observed in any other market, exhibiting seasonality at the daily, weekly and annual levels, and abrupt, short-lived, generally unanticipated price spikes. On the other hand, they have encouraged researchers to intensify their efforts in the development of better forecasting techniques. At the corporate level, electricity price forecasts have become a fundamental input into energy companies' decision-making mechanisms. As the California crisis of 2000-2001 showed, electric utilities are the most vulnerable since they usually cannot pass their costs on to retail consumers. The costs of over or under contracting and then selling or buying power in the balancing or real-time markets are typically so high that they can lead to huge financial losses or even bankruptcy. Extreme price volatility, which can be in the orders of two or more higher than other commodity or financial assets, has forced market participants to hedge not only against volume risk, but also against price movements. Forecasts from a few hours to a few months ahead have become of particular interest to power portfolio managers. A generator, utility company or large industrial consumer who is able to forecast the volatile wholesale prices with a reasonable level of accuracy can adjust its bidding strategy and its own production or consumption schedule in order to reduce the risk or maximise the profits in day ahead trading. The question therefore stands, what and how are we forecasting? Well, unlike other commodities or financial markets, the electricity spot market is typically a day-ahead market and does not allow for continuous trading. This is a result of system operators requiring advance notice in order to verify that the schedule is feasible and falls within transmission constraints. In a day-ahead market, agents submit their bids and offers for delivery of electricity during an hour or shorter load period of the next day before a certain market closing time. Thus, when dealing with the modelling and forecasting of intraday electricity prices, it's important to remember that in most markets, prices for all contracts of the next day are determined at the same time using the same available information. The genuine role of an organised market for electricity, like a power exchange or power pool, is to match the supply and demand of electricity so that determination of a market clearing price, or MCP. Typically, the MCP is established in an auction conducted once per day, as the intersection between supply curve, constructed from aggregate supply bids, and demand curve, this is either determined from the aggregate of demand bids, or the system operator estimating in a one-sided demand auction the demand profile. Buy and sell orders are accepted in order of increasing or decreasing prices until the total demand and supply are met. Bids with negative prices are allowed in many markets, potentially leading to negative prices when demand is very low. The cost of shutting down and ramping up a power plant, for example, can exceed the loss from accepting negative prices or, and especially in recent cases, when production for renewable sources is very high. We see this especially in the case of wind. When there is no transmission congestion, the market clearing price is the only price for the entire system. However, when there is congestion, locational marginal prices or zonal clearing prices differ from the system price and from each other. For smaller and medium-sized markets like the Germany EX, Polish, uh, Scandinavian, Nord Pool, the system price is usually established, but for larger markets like the North American PGM, zonal prices or prices of major market hubs are computed. Interestingly, transmission congestion itself can be predicted in the short term, and this was shown in a recent paper by uh, Lowland. For very short-term horizons for delivery, the transmission system operator operates the so-called balancing or real-time market. This technical market is used to price deviations in supply and demand from day ahead on long-term contracts. The TSO needs to be able to call an extra production at very short notice since the deviations must be corrected on a continuous basis in order to ensure system balances. It should be noted that the balancing market is not the only technical market. To minimise the reaction time in the case of deviations in supply and demand, the system operator runs an ancillary services market which typically includes the down-regulation service, the spinning and non-spinning reserve services, and of course the response reserve market. Day-ahead balancing and ancillary service markets serve different purposes, but are complementary. 
The modelling and forecasting of prices from the latter two markets is rather rare in literature, but there are some examples. Mei Liu uh, and Ni in 2004 developed a neural network model for forecasting real-term LMP before and after the day-ahead market is cleared, and then tested it in data from PGM and New England markets. Olsen and uh, Soda in 2008 built a model for the balancing services in the Nord Pool using combination of ARIMA and discrete Markov processes. Finally, Tamalski and Libuki in 2009 forecast balancing market and power exchange they have markets jointly in the Poland using a neural network. More recently, recognizing the fact that the emerging smart grid technologies and the large scale integration of variable resources into the grid have led to the growth in the market for ancillary services. Wang in 2014 investigated the application of a reduced form approach for modelling the behaviours of the operating reserve and regulatory prices in the Ontario and New York markets. The patterns and characteristics of the prices of ancillary services differ considerably from those of day ahead electricity prices, with the particular features of a low price level, high variability, and more frequent and extreme spikes. The last feature in particular makes the prices for ancillary services more difficult to predict. Some markets, like the Australian National Electricity Market and the uh, Ontario Electricity Market, follow a single settlement real-time structure. In such a system, bids must be submitted to the market operator on a pre-dispatch day, but the volume can then be revised up to 5 or 10 minutes prior to the dispatch, without any restriction. The prices are set by the market operator each 5 minutes, and the spot prices are then determined in every half hour or hourly trading intervals, with the average over those 5 minute prices. As was pointed out by Higgs, the Australian and Ontario electricity markets are significantly more volatile and spike prone than other markets. It is no surprise 2009 Agual concluded in their recent review paper that the accuracy levels achieved by the various models for day-ahead forecasts are higher than those achieved for real-time forecasts. Finally, it should be noted that although we use the term spot and day ahead interchangeably, the former needs to be not necessarily referred to the day ahead market. The European Convention is to refer to day ahead price as the spot price. However, in the US, the term spot is typically reserved for the intraday market, uh, while the uh, day ahead market is called the forward market. Nowadays, some markets in Europe, and especially in the UK, allow continuous trading for individual low periods up to a few hours before delivery. It is customary to talk about short, medium and long-term electricity price forecasting, but there's no consensus in the literature as to what the thresholds may actually be. Short-term forecasting generally involves forecasts from a few minutes to a few days ahead of time and is of prime importance to the day-to-day -day market operations. Medium-term forecasts, uh, ranging from a few days to a few months, are generally preferred for balance sheet calculations, risk management and derivatives pricing, and in many cases evaluation is based not on actual point forecasts, but on distribution of prices over certain time periods. And this type of modelling has a long-standing tradition in finance as an inflow of financial solutions uh, is normally uh, readily observable. Finally, the main objective of long-term forecasting, with lead times measuring in months, quarters or even years, is investment profitability. Uh, and planning, such as determining the future sites or fuel sources of power stations. As Ventosa remarks, capacity investment decisions are the main variables, and unit equipment decisions are generally neglected in this context. While similar tools and techniques can be used for short and medium term horizons, long term horizons generally require a totally different approach. So, over the next series of blog posts, we're going to start to look at the, you know, and to give an overview of the modelling approaches. Now, nearly all review papers offer their own classifications and have various approaches which have been developed for the analysing and predicting electricity prices. Some are better, some are worse, but all have many things in common. Without loss of generality, the main groups of models being multi-agent, in which we look to simulate the operation of a number of system agents, uh, electricity generating companies, interacting with each other, and build the price processes by matching the demand and supply in the market. Secondly, fundamental structural models which describe the electricity price dynamics by modeling the impacts of important physical and economic factors on the price of electricity. Thirdly, we have reduced form, that's quantitative and stochastic models. Uh, they look to characterize the statistical properties of electricity prices over time and the ultimate objective of a derivatives evaluation and risk management approach. Fourthly, we have statistical, um, econometric and technical analysis approaches, which are either direct applications of statistical techniques onto load forecasting or power market implementations of econometric models. And finally, we have a computational category, uh, and that's typically artificial intelligence-based, non-parametric and non-linear statistical approaches uh, that look to combine various elements of machine learning, evolution and fuzziness to create approaches that are capable of adapting to complex dynamic systems, and they may be regarded intelligent in some sense.
Finally, it should be mentioned that as many of the modeling and pricing forecasting approaches considered in the literature are hybrid solutions, therefore combining techniques from two or more of the groups previously mentioned. Their classification is non-trivial, indeed if it's even possible. I hope you'll join me over the coming weeks as I look to cover in depth each of the main approaches to electricity price forecasting and to discuss the models, their strengths, weaknesses and how they're used in the trading and risk management sectors. You'll find links to the new posts and new videos as and when they appear in the links below uh, and you can head over to energyanalyst.co.uk to find the latest publications.